This tutorial is to walk you through Script Pro Go Live Perspectives 1 through 4. Script Pro allows for event scripts to be executed live, allowing for real time changes and time stamping. We will go over the Go Live area, Go Live Perspective Options, the Perspective View Windows, Making Edits in Go Live, Time Stamping Elements, as well as other Go Live options. As a reminder, in order to view a production schedule and go live, the status has to be set to ready. To do so, be sure to enter the production schedule. Then, click Show Details. Under the Main Info tab, make sure the Ready box is checked and the Complete box is unchecked. Then, click Save. To execute the script in Go Live, click the Go Live icon at the top of the screen. This will pull up all production schedules that have the status as ready. To start, select the game in the list, which takes you to the Go Live Perspective Options. For this tutorial, we will go over Perspectives 1, 2, 3, and 4, as they are very similar to each other and are configured with the same process. Let's start with Perspective 1. Enter the view by clicking the button. This will pull up a view that is preset to your username with information that you need to see. The view breaks down into three windows. The far left hand side is your game time queue, or quick views to the different segments of the game. By clicking a time frame, the segments underneath pull up. Click a segment to jump to the elements under that segment. To jump back to the current element you are on, click the green current button. The middle left hand side is your production schedule. The blue bars are the segments with the elements underneath. The highlighted green element represents the current element that you are on. The right hand side is the viewer, representing what the person viewing the perspective is in charge of executing for this element. For this example, the PA script is viewed on the right hand side. So, this view is set up for the PA announcer. Within the production schedule, are the options for columns. The information under these columns are support information that the staff member should see to aid in fulfilling this element. For example, time of day helps the PA announcer know when they should start reading the script. This view can be customized from user to user. To set up the perspective, click the view button at the top left hand corner. This will pull up the choose display settings window. As you can see, you have the option to change the game time queue, columns within the production schedule, and the script to show in the viewer. Let's change the view to represent what a video operator would need to see. For game time queue, we will leave all checked as they will need to see all segments of the game. Under columns, we will select information useful to fulfilling what is in the viewer. So, we will select element name, duration, time of day, location, and the timestamp. Timestamp will come into play later when tracking when elements actually finish. For the viewer, let's select Overlay, Cameras, and Video. When done configuring, click Save View. You can now see the selected options in the view. If you like, you can resize and rearrange columns and sections by dragging the headers. Now that the view has been configured, you can follow along with the game. It is common for those viewing perspectives 1, 2, 3, and 4 to not handle editing elements or clicking the Done button. However, the option is available if the user has permissions. For more on setting up permissions for users, be sure to watch the Adding Users tutorial. If the user has permissions, elements can be edited from the perspective. For this example, we will revert to the PA announcer setup. Find the element you would like to edit, then click the Edit button at the top of the screen. You can now type any changes to this element. I will go ahead and change the National Anthem Singer to today's game. When you are done, click Save. To move through the flow of the game, we will need to make sure someone is clicking the Done button when elements are completed. Let's say we have just completed the Welcome Read. To move to the next element, click the Done button at the top of the screen. We now have moved to the Merchandise Read, with the completed element now highlighted gray. You will also notice under the timestamp column a time associated to that element designating the exact time the element was clicked done. To revert back to the element not being done, click the element. Then select the undone 
text at the top right hand corner. Elements can also be ignored or skipped by clicking the element and selecting the ignore text. This puts a line through the element letting you know that it will be skipped. To unignore, simply click the ignore text again. Perspectives 2, 3, and 4 are very similar to Perspective 1. The only difference is the options for more windows. Perspective 2 is like having a Perspective 1 on top of another. Perspective 3 has one window on top and two on the bottom left and bottom right hand corners. Perspective 4 is set up with four windows in the four corners of the screen. Each window within the perspective is configured exactly like setting up Perspective 1. Only difference is you can set it up two, three, or four times. A common way of setting up one of the multiple perspectives is by selecting in the game time queue for the top window, pregame, in game, and post game, and in the bottom windows, as happens or drop ins. This will keep the regular production schedule on top and random elements on the bottom. There are many different ways you can set up your view. Be sure to explore and test what works best for you. The final perspective is the producer's view. This will be covered in our next tutorial. Until next time.